Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, almost a 666. It's dated. Again, the birthday of Jesus is not dated. And there are churches that put big at December 25th. And you're going to find yourself at fault at the judgment seat of Christ. That, eat, that, that winter's uh, solace and all that, that's paganism. No other way around it. And God would not put his days, anything of his calendar events on a pagan. As I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, they've got company, that the hand of the Lord of God fell upon me. Now, The scene is, Ezekiel's in his house, and he got the elders there of Judah in Babylon. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire. Now there's nothing that says that the elders didn't see this or not saw it. But Ezekiel seems to find and see God as fire. And Hebrews, written to Hebrews, says our God is a consuming fire. From the appearance of his loins even downward, fire. Mount Sinai was all on fire. And his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, the color of amber. Now amber only shows up Three times in the Bible. Chapter 1. Verse 4. Chapter 1, verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud of fire enfolding itself, fire. And the brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber. Out of the midst of the fire. Verse 27. I saw as the color of amber, the appearance of the fire round about within. The appearance of his loins even upward, and the appearance of his loins even downward. I saw as the words appear, that's what we're reading now. In chapter 8. So it's the same vision. And the thing is, when you take evolution, you look at amber. Well, inside the amber, they found this insect, and we can tell the DNA and all that. All right. And Romans chapter 1 talks about evolution, where they give the, the creation more credit than the creator. That when you get yourself a piece of amber, if you find a piece of amber, that color would represent God in his fire. Because that's who we're looking at, and not God. And God's a spirit. We're looking at the Lord Jesus Christ. And he put forth his hand and took me by the lot of my head. That means his hair. You want a good study of the Bible? Study hair. You know where you see that one? You see that in the in the drawings of the caveman grabbing his wife by the hair and pulling her down the, down the street. That comes out of the Bible. They just got it reversed. How would you look? How would you? You know, we, we're all as Christians. We're waiting for the rapture. What if the Trump you know, our hair? We're, we're being dragged up by our hair. Not gonna say that's what happened to Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel's rapture. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, lifted me up between the earth and heaven. He's got no wings, he's got no helicopter. He's defying gravity. 
Now that hand, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9. Ezekiel 2, 9, When I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was written therein. And we saw with the scripture, that's God's hand. That's God handing that roll. Daniel 5. Book of Daniel chapter 5. Verse 5. Belshazzar is having a big old plentiful orgy. Look at verse 2. Very important. Bring the golden and silver vessels of which his father Nebuchadnezzar has taken out of the temple. That's what we're talking about now. We're looking at the temple. All right, so here's the temple. Verse 5, the same hour came four fingers of a man's hand who wrote up against the candlestick the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Guess what we're going to look at in a moment with Ezekiel? We're going to look at a hand, and we're going to look at the temple. Okay? Something about that. Amos. Amos. Hosea, Joe, Amos, chapter, I hope that's seven. Chapter seven, verse seven. And he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall. God. And if God's a spirit, we can't see a spirit, then it would be the Lord Jesus Christ. Made by made by a plumb line. Plumb lines make it sure it's level, it's it's proper. With a plumb line in his hand, God's hand. One point uh, uh, a hand has a roll. Next point, a hand has a bunch of hair. Next point, a hand has some kind of writing utensil. Next point, a hand has something to do with a plumb line. We're not done. John, Gospel of John 8. eight six. Gospel of John, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 6. Jesus Christ. They, This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stood, stood down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. That's the hand of God right there. I don't care what the Jehovah Witnesses say. That same hand that wrote down, we don't know, you can assume whatever you want. We don't know what he wrote on that ground for the Pharisees. But that's the same hand that held the plumb bob. That's the same man's fingers that wrote upon the wall. That's the same fingers that grabbed the hair of Ezekiel. That's the same hand that handed Ezekiel a roll. Back to Ezekiel 8. I don't like the Old Testament. We're only eight chapters. We haven't even touched the tip of Ezekiel yet. By the time we finish Ezekiel, we're, I'm going to try to explain the, the future millennial temple. I won't be able to do it. So Ezekiel 8. So he grabbed me in the lock of my hair. And I got to ask myself reading in the Bible. Did it hurt? I mean, come on. They took the beard of Jesus, the Bible says, and pulled it and yanked it. The Spirit... That's the Holy Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven. He's suspended. He's defying gravity. Acts chapter 1. Acts 
Now, chapter 1, verse 9, when he spoke these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. Now, didn't grab him by his hair, but he, he, he's suspended like Ezekiel was. All right? And it's either 1 Thessalonians 5 or 2 Thessalonians 5. I get it mixed up. Second Thess uh, first Thessalonians four and verse seventeen. First Thessalonians four seventeen. And then we which are alive remain we we Paul's dead. Today, Paul's dead. Did Paul expect the rapture to happen this time? Why would he say then we which are alive? Paul thought very well the rapture was going to happen this time. And remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. We're going to defy gravity one day. That's our rapture. It would be funny for those that find that Old Testament very boring. What if he did pull his fire hair? Ah, what's all that about? All right, everybody get in Ezekiel's classroom, room number 472 or 665. And Ezekiel will tell us why we had our hair pulled. And after that classroom, in, in classroom number 47, we'll have the hair of Samson lesson. And then in classroom 777, we'll find out, did Jesus have long hair or did he not have long hair? And then in classroom 847, we'll talk about the hair of the Nazarene. I mean, that's right. And then we'll talk about Absalom, who had long, flowing, beautiful hair that got caught in the oak tree. And then we'll talk about how men in the church age are not to have long hair. There's something in the Bible about hair. It's a particular study. Back to Ezekiel. We ain't done. We got 48 chapters. Okay. So the lock of my hair, the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me to the visions of, the, of God in Jerusalem. Now, this is the third, and I think they say there's six visions of, of, of Ezekiel. This is the third. So God brought me to the visions of God, not Satan, not man, not intoxicating liquor, not, you know, smoking something. Because there are some people who say, you know, all these visions, you know, they were drinking something. They ate something that bothered their stomach. They're doing drugs. You know, visions of God to Jerusalem. He's not in Jerusalem. He's in Babylon. God carries him by his head all the way from Babylon to Jerusalem. Ow, I think. I don't know. You think about three things when you read the Bible? He said, did it really hurt? In the suffering of Jesus Christ on, in all four Gospels, okay? Tell me tell me where it says in the Bible it hurt. You know it did in the suffering of Isaiah 53, servant. You know it did. But it didn't tell us it hurt. Through the door of the inner gate, the gate of the temple, Still there. Imagine he's, you know, I think about these things all the time. Imagine Ezekiel's being pulled by his hair through the sky. I, Jeremiah! Ow! Jeremiah would be like, Where's Jeremiah preaching? <laughs> At the temple. Ah, Jeremiah! What was it? Was that Ezekiel? <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if Jeremiah's at one part of the temple and Ezekiel's at the other side of the temple? Do you think about these things? Is not Moses and Elijah going to be preaching again in tribulation? And looking toward the north and there, toward the north. And it's, there's a layout. I believe there's three gates in the north, east, uh, each. Twelve gates. 
Where was the seat of image of jealousy? In the temple. Or on the temple grounds. The seat of image of jealousy which provokes the jealousy. Now you know we're going to park there. Now Ahaz went out one day into heathen territory and he sees an altar and he orders the priest to go hey go get the measurements of that altar and build me an altar like it and put it in the house of God take the labor take it off the bases get rid of the bases and put this one here you know move the altar over here my altar goes here you can sacrifice for the people on that altar you know God but my sacrifices are on my altar here it is And then Manasseh brings in the images of Baal. And there's images and idolatry going on at the temple. Who told us that? Jeremiah. Who could be on the other side preaching. Or maybe home that day. I don't know. But you got Jeremiah and Ezekiel preaching at the temple. Now we got the seat, the seat, the seat, Revelation 2. Revelation again, I like Revelation. Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. Now we're not looking at the church age, but know that it works where it dwells, Pergamos. This is not in, the, this is not in Jerusalem, but... Even where Satan's seat is. Well, that's quite interesting. There is a seat called a seat of Satan. And right here is where Pergamos is, which is in Europe. So... Satan has a seat. He had a throne above God's throne. Isaiah chapter 7. And I'm trying to find. Now look at Revelation 16.10. You know, Satan's ultimate goal, which is not going to happen. He wants God's throne. And the fifth angel, five, the number of death, poured his vial on the seat of the beast. That is in Jerusalem. Back to Ezekiel. So we're looking at a seat. You know they had Moses' seat in Jesus' time? Now, I don't know if that was a position or an actual seat. So Ezekiel 8. Now we have in verse 3 the seat. If it's an image, an idol, it's Satan. Not God. Because God's seat is the mercy seat. And no one's allowed to go in there but the high priest. So now. I heard a preacher one time, I forget, I mean, I listened to CDs, I listened to tape, I've been in church, I heard a preacher one time, I don't know, I forget who it was, that came out and say, jealousy, we're talking about jealousy, is a sin. If you have any kind of jealousy, you have sinned. But whoever that person was, Let's take our Bibles to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Verse number 5. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, graven images. Verse 4. Thou shalt have no other gods. Verse 3. Nor serve them. 
That's what Judah's doing now, and they're doing in the temple. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. God gets jealous when you have idolatry and imagery and the worship of other gods. Three, four, and five. Chapter 34. Exodus 34. Verse number 14. For thou shalt worship no other god. The Bible said there are gods. Paul said there are gods. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, capital J, is a Jealous. I think some preacher doesn't know what he's talking about. That if you put NASCAR, if you put the American Idol, you put that actor, that actress, that musical group, your child, your job, your automobiles, Chevys, Beanie Babies, your gluttony, if you put anything ahead of God, even as a Christian, God is jealous. And that jealousy is not a sin because if jealousy was a sin, you, you just accused the holy and righteous God of sinning. I don't know who that preacher was. I remember him saying, jealousy is a sin. Numbers. Chapter 5. Verse 14. Now we're not going to read all Numbers 5. We've done that study. You can go find Numbers 5. Numbers 5 is, is a man is sitting back one day and he's looking at his wife. And in his heart, I don't think my wife has been faithful to me. I can't prove it. I have no, no evidence. That's just something about her. And he could be wrong. Or he could be right. And you need to read Numbers chapter 5 about the holy water. Because this is where holy water shows up. But we're not going to look at holy water. We're going to look at verse 14 of Numbers 5. 14, 5, 14. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, the husband, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy comes upon him, the husband, and he be jealous for his wife, and she be not defiled. The bride of God is Jerusalem, Judah, Israel. And they have sinned against God in adultery with the devil. And God's up in it. I am jealous. What's my bride doing? And now he will tell Hosea, Hosea, I'm going to have you be assigned to Israel. Okay, God, what do you want me to do? I want you to go marry a whore. God, that's how Israel, that's how Israel, my bride, is being. And that this, this chapter lays out, if the wife is guilty, she rots to death. I hope you rot. I hope you rot in hell. You're not going to rot in hell, but rotting number chapter 5. And if she didn't, she be relieved of the curse. And she can go home and have babies. And the only thing for the husband is, you know, he has to have to bring, either or he has to bring an offering. But there's no condemnation against the husband. Think, you know, I think I don't think she's been faithful to me. And that the spirit of jealousy, there it is, comes upon him. As the jealousy comes upon God, who is a husband to Israel. What do you think about Jesus, who is God, and his church is slutting with Lucifer, and Satan with Esther, and Tammuz, and all the other wicked abominations that's in his pride? You need to read Revelation chapter but we're not going to. Deuteronomy. We're not done. 
I hope you haven't seen that the jealousy is not a sin. Now, jealousy, Deuteronomy 4, 24, now, it can go too far like everything else can go too far. But there's a proper, I mean, jealousy is a proper thing. It really should, you know what, I love my wife, I just feel so guilty that maybe she, someone else. It's not a sin. Now, you can carry it too far. Candy, not a sin, but you carry candy too much. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. Where have you heard that one? You've been reading that throughout Ezekiel. Remember? Even a jealous God. Look at the cross reference of that in Ezekiel. Deuteronomy 5.9. I don't know who that preacher was. I have no idea if I if I sat under his preacher, if I listened to a, a video or read a poll. That guy's wrong. I hope he's repented. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them. Look at verse 8. Graven images, likeness of anything. Verse 7, gods. Okay? You got the conflict, you got the Catholic Church. You got the Mormons who got that those golden plates and those sunglasses that are locked up. You got the Baptists who got their gods, the great chicken god. The great gluttony god of the Baptist. You know, every Baptist has to have a you know food. That's gluttony. And, you know, the steeples. You know, here's the people, here's the steeple. And how great our building is. You know? Any likeness of anything that's in heaven above. So we got that. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them and serve them. What if you're at a church... And the pastor is up on the podium, and you go to the altar and you bow down. And he's got that little grove of trees around his... What about that? Because you know there are some people that worship that man in the pulpit rather than they do with God. Now if that pastor left the church, they would leave the church. If that pastor died, they would die. I'm just trying to give you the scriptures. Nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Have you got it? I guess you didn't get it because chapter 6, verse 15. Verse 14. You shall not go after other gods and gods of the people which are round about you. Guess what Israel's done during Jeremiah and Ezekiel. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. And the anger of the Lord be kindled. kindled. What's that word kindled mean? A fire. What's going on in the West Coast in California? There's a big fire. What's going on in the island nation in the, uh, in the Atlantic Ocean? There's a volcano with fire. There was, I, don't, I haven't heard much news, but, but there was a major rage and fire in Germany. There was a major rage and fire in Russia. Have you read about the fire in the book of Revelation? Chapter 29, verse 20. You know me, 29, verse 20. Verse 18, talking about a man, woman, somebody who turns their heart away from the Lord. That can happen in churches. 
Verse 20, the Lord will not spare him, but the anger of the Lord. Look at anger. Always shows up. And his jealousy, his jealousy, God's jealousy, shall smote against that man. Thirty-two, sixteen. Look at the Rock of Salvation, capital R, Jesus Christ, verse fifteen. Jerusalem, verse fifteen, is Israel. Sixteen. They provoke him to angry with strange gods. With abominations broke they him to anger. They sacrificed the devils not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came up. And that's where we are now. The rock, capital R, that begat them are mindful. That rock is Jesus Christ. And, and Christians have very new gods that Israel didn't have. Church buildings. I'm amazing. You know, if we get people to clean up our church building and mow the lawns and trim the tree, there'll be special rewards in heaven for you. Where? Book, chapter, and verse at least one. Verse. I guess if you were to get a tree trimming, I guess you would go up to where Jesus went to the fig tree and cursed it, and it died. Okay, you know, we didn't need that thing. That would be some kind of nonsense that they would, they would quote. The pastor is as God. I, I know one church right now where the pastor is a God in pride, and, we, you know, don't you say anything about our pastor. What about Jesus? And they go, and they got bumper sticker. Jesus is the answer. What kind of bumper sticker is that? What about who can't save my soul? Jesus is the answer. I could think of a ton of questions that make that bumper sticker really make no effect. Don't you dare say anything about our pastor. Don't you do. Hey, one guy, you know, anybody says anything against my pastor, I'll grab my gun and shoot him. Then you got strange gods that Israel didn't know because Israel didn't know your pastor. And you anger God. Uh, it's 30. And verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They provoke me to anger with their vanities. That's nothing. A lot of things in America are nothing. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not my people, Gentiles. Look at verse 22, 17, 22. Set on fire the foundations of the earth. Well, so, it's quite foolish, you go back to Ezekiel, it's quite foolish for someone to get up in a pulpit, I assume it was in a pulpit, he said, I don't know who the guy is, say, we all jealousy is a sin. There is a seat of an image of jealousy. Which provoketh to jealousy. Now God is jealous. Somewhere in that temple ground there is a literal seat. And what is on that seat could be Baal. Or other one of the thousands other gods, but that seat and that image of jealousy, the jealousy is God reacting to that seat and that image that sits there. Do you know that in Rome, Italy, there's a special seat given to the Pope? 
I believe that's Satan's seat right there. There are profound seats found in the Mormon church hierarchy. And in independent and Baptist churches, there are hierarchy seats. You know how many churches I've been? Where the pastor has his seat before all the congregation. Where is that? Can you just picture Peter, James, and John? You got a problem with a seat. The people want a seat. They want to be seated in something important, or they will put their God on a seat. And in India, they put their gods on a seat, and they carry them through the lands. And uh, it's tragic and all that, but we had to think where there were soldiers killed in Afghanistan, and in a restaurant, they had empty seats and places seated for those dead men. Friend, we're not called, no matter who they are, we're not called to worship dead men. Call me what you ever want to call, but that's... If you want, if you want a season to worship dead men, that would be December, I mean uh, October thirty first, and that's Satan's birthday. In the seat of the Oval Office, in the seat of the Palace of, Eng of England. Where only one royal authority, Queen Elizabeth, I mean Queen Victoria, said if Jesus Christ comes, she said, I will get off my throne and give it to him. The temple had no seat, except for the mercy seat. And when we come to the book of Samuel, we start reading of, of, of the priesthood that just got profound and wicked and and the priests, high priest sons were, were, you know, courting the women outside the gate. And they were taking the offerings, you know, almost raw and all that. And then you find the high priest seated at the temple, at the Pope. Where did that seat come from? And we saw the seat of the Antichrist. We saw the seat of Satan. And then there's Moses' seat. There's God's throne. There will be the throne of Jesus, of David's throne. 